Welcome to Location, the Locator News Web Edition delivering top stories from a top newspaper. I'm Justin Solner. And I'm Kelsey Gastrava, and here's your news now. A Cabrini social work class took part in a healthcare rally in Harrisburg on Tuesday, October 20th. Let's go to Josh to see how the rally went. On Tuesday, October 20th, state representatives, senators, advocates, union members, medical patients, and nurses rallied in support of single payer health care. Guests from neighboring states, welcome to the beautiful Capitol building of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We are happy to have you here in our presence. I hope you enjoy the beauty of your surrounding, but more beautiful than the building is the fact that you are here for the people, for a good cause, for a movement that is going to change this nation for the better. Also in attendance were students from Cabrini who stood behind the podium on the state rotunda stairwell holding posters and participating in the rally. If this health care bill is passed, private insurances would be eliminated and all Pennsylvania citizens would be insured. Pennsylvania employers would pay 10% payroll tax and employees would only pay 3% payroll tax. <laughs> Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell stated that he would definitely sign the HB 1600 bill, making Pennsylvania one of the very first states to activate a new health care plan. And we all get it, and we all have a great, great, healthy America. We stand together, united, and in solidarity with you. The Wolfington Center recently hosted an event to inform students about immigration in Norristown. The event, which was held at a Mexican restaurant in downtown Norristown, featured speaker Brett Wells, the director of the Police Athletic League. Wells spoke about his experiences with immigration and how PAL is working to ease the transition for these local immigrant children. And now let's see what's up on the dirt sheet. What's up, all you stars and studs? I'm Jake Veterano. And I'm Gianna Chicatino. Welcome to The Dirt Sheet, where we give you the latest in entertainment. The Playboy Mansion has opened its doors to a brand new bunny. And no, it is not the extremely annoying new Girls Next Door. It's Springfield's own Marge Simpson. The iconic cartoon character will be appearing nude in the November issue of Playboy. Ew. Oh. Well, Marge might be getting the camera's attention, but Balloon Boy is certainly stealing the spotlight. Six-year-old Falcon Heen was believed to have been in some ugly balloon and fell out, but he's fine. And reports are coming in that the whole event was a hoax. The parents of the Heens could face up to six years in prison if they are found guilty of faking this event. Well, that's what they get for naming their son Falcon. Apparently, this season of Desperate Housewives, there's going to be a huge plane crash on Wisteria Lane. All right, so there's constant murders, a tornado, and car crashes on the street. Their property taxes must be crap. I know, right? Well, that's all the time we have for you this week. I'm Gianna Chicatino. And I'm Jake Veterano. The glam is on. Oh, wait. Well, Jake recently sat down with Project Runway's Tim oh, Gunn. Yeah. So let's take a look. Let's. You may know I, I stand in unbridled support of a fabulous product called Tide Total Care because it helps your clothes look newer, longer. And who doesn't want to do that? I certainly <laughs> Well, thanks for telling us about Tide Total Care, because I'm definitely that person who just shoves my clothes everywhere, Tim. Jake, so, don't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just so lazy. I have no time. <laughs> I had one question that I really, really wanted to ask. So, I am a huge fan of Lady Gaga. I want to know what you think of her fashion sense. Jake, I'll be very blunt <laughs> with you. I don't put her into any fashion category at all. I don't consider what she wears to be fashion. I believe she's a performance artist and she's wearing costumes. Plain and simple. Those are costumes. The Body Image Coalition at Cabrini works to provide support for students who want to achieve peace with their body image. The organization was founded in the fall of 2007 after identifying a need to help students with body image issues. The group will host a speaker on November 3rd in the Widener Lecture Hall. Attendees will hear the story on the life of a young girl who tragically died from bulimia at the age of 19. Cabrini College is one of the five universities to receive the Higher Education Civic Engagement Award presented by the Washington Center. The president of Cabrini College, Dr. Marie Angelo George, accepted the award at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. On, on October 19th. She was recognized by her motto, Service Beyond Oneself, and the new core curriculum, Justice Matters. Roughly 70 colleges and universities applied for the award, but only five recipients were honored for social justice and civic engagement. And now let's check in with this week's weather with Liz. 
Hi dolls, hope your week has been good so far. All right, so taking a look at the weather for the next few days. Thursday, sunny skies with a high of 66, a low of 52. Friday, showers are headed our way with a high of 65 and a low of 57. Saturday, showers continuing throughout a large portion of the day, the high reaching 64 and the low of 48. And a gorgeous end of your weekend on Sunday, a little chillier than Saturday, with the high of 55 and the low of 43. That's all I have for you today. Back to you, Justin and Kelsey. And now let's take a trip around the world. The Justice Department ruled that those who use or distribute marijuana for medical reasons will not face persecution. Attorney General Eric Holder said that the federal government will not focus its attention on prosecuting those who need marijuana for medical purposes as long as they comply with state regulations. The U.S., Russia, and France have been talking to Iranian officials on working toward an anti-nuclear agreement, but Iran may back off. Iranian officials broadcast threats on television to use their nuclear weapons. Talks will, talks will continue, and President Obama still hopes to reach an agreement. And now it's time to check in with your two-minute drill with Nick. What's going on, all you sports fans? Nick Goulden here with your two-minute drill. The men's soccer team defeated Newman University with a score of 2-1 on October 17th. Senior midfielder Brian Raff will score the final goal and handed the Knights their first loss against a conference team in six games. The women's volleyball team defeated Cedar Crest College three games to none. Stephanie Reclau's season attack percentage is ranked 12th in the nation in NCAA. And now let's take a look at women's soccer this week. The Lady Cavs outlasted Gwena Mercy in a defensive battle that needed overtime to decide the winner. Junior striker Anne Marie Cola scored on a chip shot just over four minutes into the overtime to seal the deal. The Cavs have now won seven straight, and all seven have been shutouts. They have not been scored on in a team record 642 minutes. The Eagles play one of the worst football games I've ever seen in the NFL in my life. They lost to the 1-4 Oakland Raiders with a score of 13-9. The offensive line for the Eagles gave up six sacks to the mediocre Raiders defense, and in the end, Oakland rode this momentum to an ugly defeat over the Birds. The Phillies conjured up a huge win in Game 4 against the Dodgers with a score of 5-4. The win came from a smashing hit in the ninth inning by Jimmy Rollins with two outs. Down by two runs, Rollins cracked the ball into the gap in right center field, and in came Brundlin and Ruiz to give the Phillies the win. The crowd erupted as fireworks lit up the sky at Citizens Bank Park. Jimmy's two-out base walk-off was just the third of its kind in the history of postseason baseball. That's all for your two-minute drill. Now let's take a look at the Philadelphia Phillies' road to repeat. Phillies fever is multiplying at Cabrini College, and on Tuesday, October 20th, the outbreak went wild. Phillies fans flocked to the marketplace to show off their red t-shirts and Phillies pride. The dance team was on hand to show off some of their newest routines, and even though they weren't the only ones busting a move for the Phils in the cafeteria, they certainly brought along that it factor. Captain Jacqueline Marciano had a very special surprise for Cabrini College. Marciano was able to get Good Day Philadelphia to cover the event in our very own cafeteria. Seanette Wilson, anchor for Good Day Philadelphia, was on hand to interview students. With some added momentum here at Cabrini College, it looks like the Phils are ready to paint the town red. This is Jake Veterano on location. Thanks for watching this week's Web Edition. Be sure to tune in next week for another great episode. I'm Kelsey Castrava. And I'm Justin Silner. Have a great day. This episode of Location is brought to you by the Center for Teaching and Learning, located in the Ida Rolla Center.